next speaker today is Bikas Saha. He is a software engineer at Horton Works, and he'll be talking about uh, your Hadoop cluster. Please help me welcome Bikas. Yeah, it's, it's the fag end of the day, and everybody wants to go home, so I'll, I'll try and keep this short. Uh, the, the talk kind of assumes that uh, people are mostly familiar with Hadoop and, and have kind of run Hadoop, Hadoop, Hadoop jobs or have tried to debug some of their jobs and, and, and so they don't need a, a, a newbie in introduction into the, the whole landscape. Uh, if not, then, then feel free to ask questions and I'll try to fill in as, as, as best I can. Uh, so let's start. When we talk about debugging Hadoop clusters, you know, they're always a nightmare because uh, usually you don't know where to start and, and how to methodically approach the problem. And there are so many different machines and everything is breaking all over the place that, that it's hard to start working from a root cause or, or working from some, an, some smoke and getting down to the fire. But what typically happens is that your, your jobs run slowly for some reason and that is the thing that rings the bell. So, so what we'll try to do here is, is try to move through this process of debugging. Uh, clearly, this, it's more art than science right now. And uh, we'll not be able to cover all of it uh, in, in 30 minutes. But I'll give you an, an idea of how to proceed, uh, what things to look for, and, and how the ecosystem of the, the open source uh, Hadoop community is trying to make things easier for you. So mostly when you talk about debugging Hadoop clusters, they tend to be of three types, going from low level to high level. The lowest level are the metrics and monitoring piece, where you're looking at different things like counters and other kinds of system, as well as Hadoop-related metrics, which are being published to the cluster. At the next level, you come to something called logging and correlation, which is a little bit more at the service level, where you have a service like HDFS or HBase running, and it has logged a bunch of information or it has uh, you know, given us some other data that, that gives you some idea at, of what is happening at the service level and how you can correlate relationships or issues across services. And finally, at the highest level is you, know, you have your own app which is running, for example, it's a Hive app or a Spark app uh, or, or a pig job. And, and, and what, can you, what can you do to trace all the dependencies in that job so that you can analyze it uh, for different kinds of failure conditions or issues? So, so let's start at the lowest level of metrics. And like I said, metrics are the smoke which point usually to a fire. And we can look at metrics as a high level pointer to what's going wrong with the cluster or what is the steady state of the cluster. And if you, if you install your cluster using Apache Ambari, then you'll find uh, uh, that the AMS or Ambari metric system is a new service which replaces Ganglia and Nagios for the metrics layer and collects all the metrics for you. And it has come out in, uh, in version 2.2.0 uh, with, with Grafana integration. Why Grafana? It, it's a religious question, but it's based on an open API, so anybody else could, could put in their own dashboard out, of, out there also. And it's come with a built-in uh, built HDFS, HBase, and YARN dashboards for, uh, so that you can make sense of your metrics. Now, maybe we'll start you know, as, as, uh, with an example. Uh, there was an issue where uh, jobs were running slowly when they were trying to write to HBase. And you know, it wasn't clear what is wrong because none of the machines seemed to be you know, running very hot on CPU or, for, or, or any of those reasons. But then when you looked at HBase metrics, and if you knew that you had to look at this metric called RPCQ length, you would have figured out that there was a big spike in that compared to its normal level. And from that metric, if you knew that you had to jump to the data node for that corresponding HBase region server and look at the RPC latency metric on that, you would find that that had a correlated jump also. And from that, if you could jump to the system metrics for, for the OS, which show you know, what the disk uh, latencies are on, on that machine, you would find that there's another correlated jump over there. So you know that a bad disk on one of the data nodes is causing that data node to get slow and all the region server HBase writes to, which are going to that data node are going slow, and that is eventually slowing down your job. Now, all of this is good, except that how do you go about doing it? Not everybody knows which metrics to look for among the thousands of metrics that exist. And so what the community has done is created a bunch of dashboards that give you the most important metrics for certain flavors of analysis that you have to do. And all of that is integrated into Apache Ambari using this recent Grafana integration. 
So if you go to the Grafana uh, page on your Ambari cluster, uh, and you could potentially do it with any other uh, dashboarding scheme that you have with any other distribution, all the data is, is out there with an open API. So this has just been the first implementation for convenience. And you, if you click on the Grafana link, you'll show up, you'll see a bunch of uh, service specific dashboards where, where you know, uh, the Apache Agebase community has worked with the Apache Ambari community to figure out what are the most important metrics that should be shown and shown next to each other so that you can see correlations uh, of these metrics when you have a cluster outage. Similarly, there's an HDFS dashboard with, and this is just a screenshot of, uh, of a part of the dashboard. If I encourage you to go ahead and look at the dashboard when you have time to play with it and, and see all the different metrics that are being shown by default, because those are the most important metrics that you would want to look at when there's a cluster outage. Similarly, there's a yarn dashboard. And the great part about visualization of all of these metrics is if you're given a bunch of numbers, we human beings are not good at figuring out what to do with them. But if we can see them, then it's very clear to us that, for example, what did I do here? Mm. For example, all of this is OK. All of this is OK. But if I go back to the previous slide, you'll, in this metric, there's a sudden spike. It's very easy to visualize these when you're looking at it at the, uh, using a dashboard. And so we, we think that by giving you these stock set of metrics that are available out of the box, it'll, it'll help somebody who's not familiar with the system to not have to dig into all the different counters uh, or metrics which exist, but go to these dashboards and be able to figure stuff out. What are the next steps in this? Clearly, when you see these kind of uh, spikes, the obvious question is, why isn't the system already alerting by on its own, saying that you've crossed a threshold here? Because clearly, the spike is beyond the normal threshold. So those are the features that are coming in Apache Ambari going forward, so that it can auto-alert based on historical behavior, so that you don't have to, you can get an alert ahead of time when something is behaving badly. So let's look at the next level up at logging and aggregation. All of this was at a counter level on, on the cluster. But specific Hadoop services like HDFS or Yarn or, or HBase, they have a bunch of logging that is very informational if you know what to look for. And the most important logs that I would encourage you to look for during a cluster outage are the audit logs. These are specifically designed with a, with a clear structure so that you can understand what or which system is, being, is, is putting load on a given service. So here is an example of an HDFS audit log. What it tells you is what is the operation type, whether it was authorized or not. For example, the allowed is equal to true. It tells you who is the user who's, who's applied this uh, operation on, the, on, on HDFS. In, in, in this example, the UGI is equal to user A. That basically says what is the user that is, that is making this operation, what is the source IP from the, which this has come, and what is this operation. In this case, it is called a command called create. So somebody is creating a file and it, and it got logged over here. The file name is also logged over there. And the interesting part that I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to see, and we'll come back to that later, is this caller context. It's a new feature in, HDF, in the Hadoop ecosystem to pass context around services. Similarly, if you look at the resource manager, which is uh, the yarn component, which manages all the jobs and allocation of compute on your cluster, You'll find a similar audit log and caller context over there. What is the operation type? In this case, it's a submit application. That means somebody submitted a job to the cluster. User A from this IP submitted it. And uh, this is the caller context, which connects it back to a pig smoke job. Here is the application ID, in case you want to debug that further. Now, that. When, when, you look, uh, when you look at these audit logs, let's say your HDFS cluster is down. One example of using these audit logs would be to figure out why is your HDFS name node not working or, or is unresponsive. If you could take, let's say, an hour's worth of these audit logs and simply do a grep and a count on the operation or a grep and a count on the username, you'll potentially see at, in, in most occasions that somebody has issued 10,000 create uh, file requests or 10,000 delete file requests. So a simple grep and count on these on the different fields in this audit log can actually give you a lot of information about what is happening in the cluster now or in the past one hour or whenever you have an, had an outage. 
So whenever you have some kind of a system outage at, uh, at the service level, like a yarn or an edge base master or, or a name node master outage, the audit logs are, are what you should go look for and try to figure out based on these structured fields what you want to, uh, where you want to go uh, with this investigation. Now often it happens is, let's, let's say you found that you know, certain user with a certain uh, is, is creating a lot of uh, files on HDFS, but uh, then how do you go back from that user to the actual job or the actual Uzi workflow that, that, that caused the issue? That is where this caller context comes in, where think of it as, as a tracing mechanism by which an, an application in the Hadoop ecosystem can pass this context to the next level application and that can pass it on to the next level application so that you can stitch the lineage of these operations across a given workflow. So in this example, the caller context is saying that the first submit application was created by a pig smoke job and that is the caller context on that. How can we use this information? So what is the ecosystem doing so that they can help you uh, debug this further? That is where the yarn application timeline service comes in. So what is the yarn application timeline service? Just like the Ambari metric service is collecting low level system counters, you have the yarn application timeline service which is collecting application level tracing. And counters tend to be you know, integers or longs or they, they don't have that much fidelity in what they can uh, store. They are basically longs or, or numbers so you can only do rates or quantiles or things like that. The application timeline service lets you store more uh, uh, richer information as, as uh, JSON events with more metadata right into Yarn. So when an application starts, it can say, I requested some resource for Yarn and here is the resource type. Later it can say, I got that resource. Now I'm using that resource to start a task on that machine. Now that task has failed. So all of this event metadata along the timeline of the service or along the timeline of the application is stored in the Yarn timeline service. And that's why the name application timeline service. So many applications are actually storing these color context in the Yarn application timeline service. So for example, you're, you're running a high one TAS job and, and the ATS data for that TAS job says that uh, my color context tells me that my color type was high and the context is high, right? And the color ID is this unique identifier. Now if you look at the application uh, timeline server for Hive's own application logs, it will probably tell you that this Hive job was created because of Uzi and here is the description of that job. So now from name node, let's say you found out that a certain job is overloading because it's creating a lot of files. It's caller context said some Hive, some Taze app ID where here is the app ID of that job. From that job's context, you can get the caller that it's a Hive query. From that Hive query's context, you can get it's an app flow. And then you can get it that it's the daily ETL summary job. So now you can go back and see who is the owner of the daily ETL summary job and try to you know, ask them to debug this for you because they probably know what's happening in the cluster. So this is one way to stitch things around uh, given the caller context and all the data that is there in the application timeline service. Now, again, this is very dev oriented. If you know what you're doing then, uh, or if you know all the conte uh, context, you can probably apply it. What is the ecosystem doing to help you in case you don't have all of this information. Here is the Ambari log search service, which, which has come out with, again with Ambari 2220, where the different application logs are being collected and stored into Solar. And Ambari is giving you uh, the Solar, U, uh, an Ambari log search UI, where you can kind of get a, a centralized view where you can use a solar search query to search and try to count on these logs, especially logs like audit logs, which have a structured field. It's possible to, to run queries on solar to aggregate or group on those structured fields so that instead of logging onto that box and trying to do grep and count yourself, you can, uh, you can, you, you can issue a solar query uh, like, and, and get results uh, based on these audit logs or other logs that you understand. So, so that is what the community is doing so that it, it can help you uh, do some of this debugging easier. Finally, we come to tracing and analysis. We all understand that you know, all of these are very distributed jobs with a lot of complex relationships and, and there's a lot of rich data which has been captured, especially with the application timeline server. So now that gives us an opportunity to use big data tools and big data methods 
to actually solve this big data problem of what is wrong with my job because a job will produce thousands and thousands of events and other metric information which is spread across the cluster and potentially you can use a hive query or a, or a spark job to actually analyze that data to figure out what went wrong with your job right so what exists in the ecosystem to make this kind of an exploratory analytics easy one of the uh, the new promising projects which has come out right now in the ecosystem is is this project called apache zeppelin which gives you a notebook interface and 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 some convenient ways to display your your data uh, and it uses uh, it has many backends but it primarily uh, by default uses spark as a backend so let's say your your cluster has had your, or your, some of your jobs have had some issues and you know how to access the yarn application timeline service using uh, using a url you can point zeppelin uh, and and point it to the yarn application logs as a source load that run some queries on it and then figure out what went wrong with your job because all of that structured data is available to you and then it's up to your imagination to slice and dice it using sql or spark or or flink or cascading or whatever you have as long as you can point flink to that uh, point uh, zeppelin to that source so here is here is this is a mock up this is not uh, something real right now uh, but potentially you could you could think of the yarn community creating a zeppelin analyzer for a yarn cluster uh, where it looks at all the all the timeline data and all the metrics data and gives you a much richer dashboard compared to what the metrics dashboard will give you where it analyzes different kinds of job performance and says how many jobs were run by the hour you know and how many resources were 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 consumed by them uh and this this stock view could be used for you by you to to monitor and analyze your cluster but you could actually do more than that because you can write your own stuff right uh for hive on days uh, and 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 days job specifically there has been a lot of integration done uh with zeppelin so that a number of analyzers can be run on the ats generate uh, or the yarn application timeline service data which is generated by a hive job or a tez job can be analyzed using zeppelin using a bunch of uh, analyzers which are already part of the open source uh, uh, code base for example this is a, uh, a new analyzer called the critical path analyzer so for example you you ran a, you ran a hive job or a tez job and it had you know a uh, 100 stage job and it had thousands of tasks now where do you start debugging you know where is the most of the time spent in your ta in in your job how do you optimize this job further what was wrong with this job it's just too big a problem what the critical path analyzer is trying to do is try is it, it's trying to automate some of that and let you focus on the part where it feels according to some heuristics is the part which is slowing down the job so for example in in this case this was like a three stage job where the first stage was really tiny the second stage was a was a mapper the third stage was a reducer uh, the fourth stage was a reducer and finally it writes some output and this job actually had many more tasks but it has iso the analyzer has has crunched through the data and it has analyzed and said that the most critical path from the beginning of the job till the end is the one that consists of these four tasks which is mapper number 143 followed by reducer number 36 followed by reducer number 0 so if this analysis is right you can actually disregard everything else in your job but and only focus on these four tasks now here it shows you what the actual critical path is along the red line which means that for for most of its lifetime this second task wasn't really on the critical path because it was depending on the results from this previous task so effectively what this shows is the majority of the run time of that job has been occupied by this map 1 143 task so now if you if you trust this analysis all you need to go, do is go and figure out what happened in this one task and if you can make that run sh shorter then your potentially the entire job will run faster for you so this is some of the work that is being done by the open source community to to help uh the wider audience who's using you uh, hadoop and doesn't quite understand all the nitty gritties of it to able to be able to self help or or make sense of the data uh another such analyzer you know is is it's something is something uh, simpler that that you might find of uh, of use uh, more regularly which is 
just plot me the number of tasks by stage and and just show that to me right because then you can you can sometimes figure out that something is wrong with the parallelism there's not enough parallelism in in the in the job that's why it's not fast enough or it is constrained for resources for example in this job you can see that the first stage started and and it started executing tasks and it tailed down and in, and the second stage started over here and started executing tasks and potentially you feel that here is a bunch of empty space which is the capacity that was available to this job but which was lying unused so you may you may think that maybe if i can force this stage to be started ahead of time maybe here then i can use up this unused capacity and and potentially my job can run faster so these kind of visualizations are and and data analysis which is coming stock with the, the ecosystem components can can help uh, developers to and and operations folks to to make sense of uh, what's happening and sometimes it doesn't have to be one job and it doesn't have to be a problem that actually occurs data analysis is something that that can uh, that can often show up things that you never expected uh, one of these uh, one of the these analyzers which is part of uh, the the which can be used in zeppelin is is this uh, the the analyzer whose output i'm showing you here uh, and it basically says i look at all the yarn application timeline service uh, data for all the jobs in the cluster for the entire day and what it's trying to do is figure out all the source and destinations of data movement between tasks so for example a mapper wrote some data and a reducer read some data so the mapper is the source and the reducer is the destination it takes all these source and destination pairs and tries to figure out the rate at which the transfer was made you know how many mbs per second and then it plots it on this 3d uh, 3d chart where uh this the the axes are the machines so this is these are machines in the cluster and these are machines in the cluster and the and the vertical axis is the speed so this data is actually from one of uh, uh, our hortonworks internal clusters and there was nothing wrong actually with that cluster but when we ran this chart we figured out that there is this spike along one dimension which means that there is one machine in the cluster which when acting as a source is really slow compared to everything else and that machine is the one that that lies on this axis over here now that nothing was wrong with that cluster but if you if you run this analyzer on all the data that is present in 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 that cluster on the metrics or the application timeline server suddenly you found that if you could replace that one machine in the cluster you could potentially make most of, many of your jobs run faster even though there no nobody was complaining that you know things were running slow so so given all the metrics data that is there and all the application timeline server data that is there you know the limit is 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 your imagination on how you can slice and dice it and figure out what is going wrong with your cluster so so hopefully uh, in this talk i have been able to give you some some taste of all the different data points that are available as metrics or as events in a, in a hadoop cluster uh what are the quick go to ways by which you can use either the embari dashboards or the embari log search service uh, or some of the zeppelin analyzers to to go use that data directly out of the box and the fact that these kind of data sources exist in the cluster and if you have the interest you can actually point your data science or your analytical skills using your favorite tools like hive or spark on that data and figure out much more about your cluster than than perhaps you know today So at at this point I'll I'll open up for questions if there are any. So is there anything particular with Zeppelin uh, compared to using um, you know like a Jupyter notebook and Python to bring in the data from? No, the, the there isn't. There isn't. Uh, it's, it's just another notebook. Yeah, it is okay. just another notebook. It's just a little bit easier to use in a Hadoop cluster because it. by default integrates with spark okay right so out of the box you you can directly run a distributed job without having to you know set anything up okay. and because it's an apache project mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the other apache projects have rallied around it so you've got backends for spark you've got backends for flink backend for yeah. hive oh. right backend for tachyon backend for you you name it right so so the apache ecosystem has kind of rallied around that as 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 a notebook but if if you if your favorite you know 
you know poison is is jupiter then sure. you should just go ahead and and use it the data is all there it's up to you to figure out how to use it well thanks for your attention oh sorry uh the the sorry uh, name of what uh, apache zeppelin the notebook the, yeah the notebook that i just uh, showed yeah if you go to zeppelin.apache.org you you'll be able to get more information about it uh yeah it's a it's a fairly cool uh, project it kind of gives you a, a very quick way to ramp up on 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 distributed development because you you don't have to set up any dev environment yourself you just point to it's it's web browser based so if zeppelin is if the zeppelin server is installed on your cluster and you, let's say the url is zeppelin.foo.org you just hit that it gives you this nice notebook and without any further you know dev set up or anything you can start typing on that notebook write a you know sql query and point it to hive or write a spark job and 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 run it on the cluster and then you can use a, it has got six or seven built in visualizations for charting pie chart tables pivots so then you can you can visualize the data and and, and it's pretty cool to use i would definitely encourage you guys to to look at zeppelin as a tool for exploratory analytics you can share notebooks so once you've figured out something you can take that notebook and you and you can share it with your colleague and then they can run that no, you know you run that notebook uh without really having to understand all the all the work that you did it can be read only for them uh so so that way it's a it's a great tool for learning and sharing Yeah, yeah. So, 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 NiFi is not a Hortonworks project. NiFi is Apache NiFi. It's an Apache open source project. So, there is nothing Hortonworks about it. If you can follow the docs and 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 be able to install it on AWS, you can play with it on AWS soft layer, Azure, wherever. On Azure, you might be able to get a little bit easy with HD Insight. You might get it built in. Uh, but it's an open source uh, Apache open source project. So it. and it actually came out of nsa so people have run it on tanks <laughs> to 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 transfer data from a tank down to the <laughs> down to the main data center so yeah it's pretty easily to, easy to deploy thank well, thanks for your attention all right thank you because